Hey, welcome back. This is Spiral the Dragon. This is episode 21. I'm just getting my audio and everything ready. I'm a professional, and I come prepared. Speaking of being prepared, I did not save the last time I played like a very bad boy. So I had to go back to my last save and play through two levels to get back to where I am now. But we are here. So grab yourself a nice hot cocoa, nice hot cup of tea, whatever your fancy is. Wrap yourself up with some blankets because it is cold today. It is currently, in my time, it is the 6th of January. Oh, that is nightmare fuel. I forgot about that. And it is a, a right chilly morning. Starting off with an instant death. Well, Happy New Year. I hope your holidays went fantastic. Hope you got whatever it is you wanted for Christmas. This is actually my first time recording since December 1st. I took a month off from recording. Luckily for me, I had a nice little backlog. And I actually do have a very good backlog until... I'd say, as of now, I've got until about late April. But it's always good to have more stuff, so that way you're ready for a drought, whatever. In case I want to take a break from doing recordings, I have a nice little backlog. So it has been a month since I played Spyro, and it's weird getting back into the controls, so I might be a little sloppy. As I said, uh, it's been about a month. Actually, it's been more than a month. I've been sick a few times, so I haven't really been able to, you know, up to recording that, and I felt like taking a little break. So I've been playing other games. It's hard to find a good volume. I think that's okay. If that's too low, please tell me in the comments. Because I don't want one, either myself drowning out the sound, or the sound drowning me out. You know, I want to find a nice balance. But anyway, I've been playing other games like, oh crap. Oh crap's a fun game if you haven't played it. I've been playing The Witcher 3 on the Nintendo Switch. It was a game that came highly recommended to me by at that blue pwn on Twitter. It is his most absolute favorite game. And I like to play other people's favorite games. It gives me a, you know, a better idea about, you know, who they are, what what they're into. And so far I am addicted to The Witcher. Like, <laughs> I'm not that far in. I had just now met up with Yennefer. And am now hunting down, I can't remember her name, Cecile, Silly, Silla, Blah. I'm gonna have Witcher fans, like, cutting my head off over that. Thank you for releasing me. You're welcome. Sugar. Oh, how rude. Oh, well then, how nice. Oh, oh, no, no. So, there's got to be a firework, so I can destroy that. Oh, well, this is what happens when you don't play a game for a little bit, you get rusty. Get rusty, rusty. Oh, 
<laughs> that was cute. It still hit me. Kind of shudder to think how I'm going to be doing in Ghosts and Goblins when I finally do get back into that. Spoiler alert, it's going to be horrible. Ha! <laughs> Got the return home kind of early, huh? Two more dragons and a boatload of treasure. But where do I go from here? I came from that way. You have to bear with me. This is one of the uh, slightly confusing levels as far as the layout goes. See, there's. Okay. I thought that was a different whirlpool. And fudge. It's a whirlpool of fudge. <sighs> I also got uh, Pokemon Shield. Got that from my sister Susan. She's amazing. To... She actually got me the combo pack of sword and shield. It came with codes to get a Dynamax Larvitar and I forget the name of the other one. It was a dragon from the previous gen. I guess I'm just gonna go back the way it came from. Uh, my thoughts on the game are it did feel a bit rushed. I know that you, it's hard to not know of the controversy that the game caused. I mean, it was everywhere on Twitter. I mean, yeah, Game Freak did uh, fib about... I need to get over there. About the new models. I can under I can see how a lot of the new animations needed to go into the camp, because there are a lot of unique animations that appear there. I liked the aesthetic of the sports arena. Just like that whole thing. I kind of felt like that should have gone, that idea could have gone a lot better in, like, Unova. But I can also, I can see how it fits Britain, too, because how big soccer is over there. I found an area I need to get to, but I need to find a jumping spot. Oh, there's the rocket. I mean, I had fun with the game. I decided to take my time with it. I got it on Christmas Eve and didn't beat it until just yesterday. Mainly because I was also splitting time between a few different games. There's the rocket, but I don't think I can get to that from there. That's not a good spot to get to that. I don't have the height I need. There we go. But I did have fun with it. I didn't like how disconnected I felt from the main story. I mean, because it's like stuff would happen and be like, I oh, don't worry about it, just keep getting badges. You know, like the 
there's, uh, you know, spoilers. I apologize if you haven't gotten this far or haven't played the game yet. But there is a part where Pokemon start Dynamaxing everywhere. And it's like you see large crowds of people saying, Oh man, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Oh no! And by the time you get there, it's already been handled and everyone's just telling you about how cool it was. Well, not how cool it was. That's That's not a very accurate description. But it's my uh, my thoughts on that still stand, and it's like you don't see what happens, and that happens a few times where it's like something really big happens. It's, oh, don't worry about it. The champion's got it. It's like, well, I want to get it. You know, <laughs> I want to got it. It's my adventure, not his. He had his adventure. Let me go got it. Let me go get it. I want to fight the big things and have fun, catch some big stuff. I did waste a lot of time in the wild area, because there'd be times where I'd boot up the game and said, okay, I'm going to try to get one badge today, and I would just end up dicking around in the wild area for about three hours, <laughs> building up watts and doing raid battles. I honestly found it a lot easier to just not wait for other people to join in. Because otherwise I'd be sitting there for quite some time just waiting and waiting and waiting. And usually with my type advantages, I would just one-shot the Dynamax Pokemon anyway. There's a word that a Pokemon Direct is going to be happening sometime this week. Are you going to make them... Ooh, don't breathe fire on me. That was a slow incoming target and it projectile and it still hit me. Wow. That was disgraceful. But they're... I'm guessing more than anything they're going to be addressing the whole National Dex issue. Oh, you blood hole. Man, where was I? No! Oh my goodness! I don't want to do that. Thank you. Because I, I really uh, can understand a lot of the... Oh, frick me with a salad fork. Just a lot of how that upset people. I don't remember how the hell I got over there. <sighs> frick, frick sandwiches. About the whole thing about saying how, oh, we couldn't include all the Pokemon because of X reasons. When, you know, that all turned out to be, you know, not true. Oh, fluff monkey sandwiches, man. You know, when they just reuse models from the 3DS. And I can understand why they did that. And I can understand why that, you know, upset a lot of people. I mean, to me, it's... I would be more interested in just... Well, I don't know. I don't know what I want from a Pokemon game, you know? I've been playing these games for over 20 years. I mean, I stepped out somewhere in the middle of Gen 3... I think it was when Fire Red and Leaf Green came out. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm just going a freaking circle. Yep, that was a circle. Okay, then where did I go? Oh, make it, make it, please make it. I don't remember which way I went. Ugh. See, this is what happens when you record early in the morning and don't have enough coffee in you. As I was saying, I don't know what I really want from a Pokemon game, you know? I mean, I remember just how exciting, like, Gen 1 and Gen 2 were to me. And that was, I was younger then. I, I will grant you that and give you that and tell you that. And I'm not going to say that I'm a Gen 1-er, but I'll say I'm a Gen 1 and 2-er. I feel like, you know, during the 
time when Pokemon was just like absolutely, you know, a media monstrosity. I'm not saying it's not now. It was over here. I did it again. No, I didn't. Okay. But it's like, I remember when Pokemon Stadium was like huge. I mean, because we only had the 8-bit sprites to go off of. And so just having 3D models is, is exciting. And I did get X and Y. The... Actually, no, it was uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire when I jumped back in. Those were my first Pokemon games since uh, Ruby Sapphire. So I missed out on Gen 4. Oh my goodness! So I missed out on Gen 4 and 5. This is not happening. That was So yeah, I missed out on Gens 4 and 5. I know a lot of people that will say that that was sacrilege. I heard Gen 4 was absolutely ridiculously slow. You butthole. But yeah, seeing Pokemon just in all 3D, I mean, it was cool, but there's a part of me that still really misses, like, just the all-sprite art of Pokemon. And I feel like they could have gotten away with sprite art for at least a, you know, a few more gen- Why do you get multiple hits on me? I don't even get to recover and you get to hit me multiple times. That is some straight bullshit. You've hit me. I mean, I feel like they could have gone up to like uh, easily. And I know Gen 5 was sprites, but they were, you know, they were animated sprites, which is really cool. I've seen, I, I just got Pokemon White a couple months back, playing it for the first time. I love Oshawott, he is absolutely adorable. And just like the animated sprites look awesome, and I feel like they could have gotten away with that for at least two more generations. I know that everyone... No, I'm not going to say everyone. I know a lot of people push for 3D when the 3DS came out. Or there was always that push for that big home console game. Like, I seem that... I guess people don't count Gale of Darkness as... Whoa, what happened? Okay. Don't count Gale of Darkness as, uh, you know, a home console game, or at least a mainline game. Thanks, Spyro. I'd love to help you catch Nasty, but I'd really hate being trapped in Crystal again. Don't worry. The only one who's going to be trapped is him. Where are we at? Oh, we still got 160 treasure and a dragon. I, I guess it's like I'm growing out of Pokemon. Just like playing the newer games. I'm not going to say that I wouldn't try them. Or even like them, but... It's just... You don't feel that same magic that you do playing those games anymore. They don't feel as fun... As... Or exciting to me. The mechanics haven't changed very much. I mean, they they had new gimmicks like they did uh, Mega Evolutions, Z-Moves. I did not like Sun and Moon. 
I got. Thank you for releasing me. You're, you're quite welcome. I got Sun for the 3DS. I skipped Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because I won't get into that. <laughs> But yeah, it's just like this, that was like one of the first Pokemon games that I ever played, that once I beat the game, I didn't care about the post-game, I did not want to continue. I felt like, uh, just like with Sword and Shield, that it was not my story, it was someone else's story. And their story was a lot more interesting than mine, it was just, I was there, accompanying them on their journey. Where with, like... Red and blue, gold and silver. You know, that was that was my journey. That was my quest. I was the, the focal point of the story. I'm hoping that that's the rest of the treasure. I think it is. Come on, go all the way up, please. Please, please. Okay. This level is completed. So let's go. But yeah, with like Sword and Shield, it's like all these amazing things were happening in the background, and I either was not included in them or didn't see them at all whatsoever. And it's just like I felt like that whole thing with Eternius at the end was just tacked on. It's like, well, why? What's the point? What is the point? I mean, it was a legendary that I don't recall because I wasn't... I wasn't even really invested in the story enough to pay attention to... Oh, you butthole. To know whether or not he was built up. Because I don't even recall if he was. It was just he was there. He was there. Big Bad was there. And all of a sudden, the darkest day is about again. And someone gotta stop it. Ah, oh, fluff and others. Oh, new. Okay, looks like we're doing this one next. I mean, because I also I read a lot of reviews and watch a lot of videos of people critiquing Sword and Shield, and I feel like they had a lot of valid points, but I also feel like they were kind of unfair to the game. I mean, because I also understand that Game Freak is constantly being pressured to make a game yearly. And that kind of pressure really has to suck. I mean, because not only do you have your bosses telling you you need to get this out now, but you also have fans that are, a lot of them being, I'm not going to say that, uh, a lot of them were being unfair with their expectations, but when you're paying $60 for a game that feels just like an up 3DS game, they have a right to be upset. Because to me, Sword and Shield felt like it was a 3DS game. Yeah, it was bigger, but it still felt like it was under the same constraints of the games that we had over 20 years ago. The linear paths, the just everything. It's like that game could have been done on the 3DS.
I freed the fairy. Come here, mushroom. I need your juices. I, I mean, I still absolutely love Pokemon. Oh, no, it's going to hit me and I'm going to fall off. I still, as I'm saying, I still love Pokemon. And I still want to and love to revisit some of the older titles. Oh. I need to... Come on, no. Oh, poor guy. He just wanted to float and I killed him. Who's the bully? I'm the bully. I think a lot of what made Pokemon great Fairies are always on your side, Spyro. was when there was less detail because it let your imagination create the world around you. It let you create how the battles played out in your head, how grand everything was. And that that was just cool. Or like I remember the first time playing Pokemon Stadium, putting my copy of Yellow into the into the game pack on the back of the N64 controller and having an announcer just call out all the moves that I did, seeing all my Pokemon just there for the first time. And it was just a supplement to my imagination for how I saw these creatures that I spent so much time with and grown so attached to. And even though you can interact with your, with your Pokemon more than you ever could, I feel like a lot of that magic and connections kind of just lost. And it's kind of sad. I remember playing the Game Boy titles and <laughs> like talking to my Pokemon you know like when they get hit really hard I'd say oh hang in there buddy hang in there <laughs> and I don't know it's just I felt like you you really did have a connection with them I was forcing my right but I don't know I'm just I'm just yammering on at this point about that I don't mean to get uh, political about Pokemon. I mean, Sun and Moon were okay. I mean, not Sun and Moon. Sword and Shield were okay. But it just could have been more. I mean, even if the full decks wasn't incorporated. You know, if the scope was different. I think that would have made all the difference. Also, on the side, for the last couple of months, every now and then, I've been recording episodes of a Nuzlocke for Crystal. It's the first time I've ever attempted the Nuzlocke. I'm about five episodes in, and spoiler alert, I have one death ready. I think two, I don't remember. There's a key I need. Ah, Spyro, thanks. 
supercharge will get you to new places here in Lofty Castle too. See where it takes you. Oh boy, supercharging. Fun, fun. Whoosh. Where am I going? <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere fast, I can tell you that. Okay, well, before I get too in-depth with the supercharging... Don't go up there! No, I just jumped down! No, bad Spyro. Go back to that other area and clear that out. Because I kind of went ahead of myself there. Yeah, like I would have missed this and it would drove me nuts. I went in the opposite direction. Well, this at least takes me to the chest. I believe. Well, the chest is the chest is up there. Poor guy. <laughs> I feel sorry about killing those guys. I mean, it's just, they just want to float up on their balloon. They don't want no trouble. Okay, scratch what I said earlier. That was that was a dick move.
That's not where I want to go. I'm going to go over here. Well, then that was where I wanted to go. Because it took me back to where I needed to go. Okay. I need to get back to the supercharge. Um, but I don't think I can do that from here. That's a pet, I believe. What is it? I'm not making that. Down blue. Okay. And what I've been saying about Generations 1 and 2, about Pokemon, going back to that, um, I'm not stating that those games are superior. Because I know the whole Gen 1-er thing, and it's like, oh, well, those were the best, it was only good when there was 151 or 250. That's, that's, not, the, that's not the case. Those games were severely flawed. They're not perfect games. They're not the best. Okay, let's go for this. Did I go about that in the wrong direction? Oh, no! Oh, I had that. I'm just saying that I prefer how I feel while playing those games as opposed to some of the newer ones. And yes, that is nostalgia. I can fully and completely admit that. It's the same reason why I love playing a lot of uh, the older games that I do, because nostalgia. And not saying that nostalgia is wrong. Because just like I recently played through Mega Man X, and it is a fantastic game. It'll always be a fantastic game. That's not uh, nostalgia talking. It's just it's legitimately a remarkable game. And it always will be a remarkable game. Just like Mario 3, The Legend of Zelda, they're timeless. But a lot of 3D games, like the Spyro here, aren't as timeless. And I know I will be crucified for saying such, but that's true. A lot of games from the PlayStation 1 era will not... Will, they just won't age well. I mean, go back and try playing Goldeneye on the N64. If you compare how that game plays to how modern first-person shooter controllers are today, it's impossible to play. It cannot be done. It is just that sloppy. And it pays me to say stuff like that because back then, Goldeneye was so awesome. And it did a lot for the genre. I would be lying if I said it didn't. There's one up there. And there's, I mean, there's. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, did I save? I need to save. If I'm saving twice, it's always better to save twice. Because you never knew. Except in games like Resident Evil, because you have limited saves. Unless you cheat. It. Speaking of Resident Evil, I will be playing that fairly soon on the channel. It will be one of the classic games in the series. 